Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to add the Gigaspaces Helm chart repository so we can get the charts. So for that, we have a Helm command called Helm repo add. We give the repository name, for example, Gigaspaces, and provide the URL. This URL is part of our documentation, we can find it there. And once you execute this command, uh, this repository is listed, and we can uh, start acting on it. First, we'll do um, Helm repo update to get the repository content. It will grab and refresh the, the content. And then if we uh, execute a search command, for example, for Insight Edge, and we can see all the Insight Edge uh, um, charts. The important one is the one called Gigaspaces slash Insight Edge. That's the main chart. Uh, there are also um, small charts, which are um, actually part of the bigger chart. They're like subcomponents. In more advanced scenarios, you can use those separately. In this demo, we'll just demonstrate the main inset chart. And of course, there are also charts for a um, zap. In fact, if you do a hand search Gigaspaces, we'll see all of the charts, both the inset edge one and the zap one. <coughs> so to get going, uh, what we want to do is we want to fetch the chart to our local um, disk system. We can install the chart directly from the repository, but we actually find it easier to work with local charts. So we'll do a Helm fetch Gigaspaces Insight Edge with version 14. And we also want to untar it so it's exploded. Sorry. And now if we look at our file system, we see that we have the Insight Edge folder. And in that, we see that the, the chart YAML and the requirements and the subcharts, etc., etc. If you're familiar with Helm, you're welcome to dive in and see how the chart is working under the hood. The next thing you want to do is to um, actually install the space or the data grid. So let's look at the command for that. So <clears throat> we, what we do is we do a Helm install insert edge. That's the name of the chart. And we name the installation, for example, demo. And additionally, you want to specify how many partitions and how many backups. So we'll specify partitions equals two and HA or high availability equals true. Notice that I'm not specifying um, how big the partition is. It chooses 400 megabytes by default. That's part of the default values YAML. And you can see that again in documentation or as part of the Helm commands. Let's copy this command and execute it. Okay, so you see that this runs fairly fast. Uh, it's not actually installed everything, it's just, uh, it's an asynchronous command, so it's just started the process. <coughs> we can see that right now, uh, it expects to um, install the services and the stateful sets and the pods. So for example, right now, one, uh, one pod is expected, but zero pods are ready, and we see that the status is container creating, and etc., etc. And now you want to, um, to track what's going on. So first, we can uh, run the command helm status on what we just installed, which is demo, that was the name. And this uh, repeats the same process, the same information. And we'll see that uh, right now, more, about, more of the pods are running. Okay, we see that right now, um, actually all of the pods are running by the time I managed to talk about it. And the stateful sets, uh, we have two stateful sets, one for the first partition, another for the second partition. And uh, each of those should have two pods, one for primary and one for backup. And there's also a stateful set for the manager. In this case, it's just one pod because we didn't turn HA for the manager, only for the processing unit. And another pod for Zeppelin. We can also see the services. So we have a service for the manager, which is uh, located in port um, 3890 on the, uh, on the node port, on the external port, and 8090 on the internal um, Kubernetes environment and another service for the Zeppelin, which we'll look in later. Um, we'll look into this one in a second. Uh, in addition to the Helm status command, we can also run Kubernetes commands. We have kubectl, which is the Kubernetes command and interface. Uh, we can do, for example, get pods, and it will list all the pods name. In addition to that, uh, lots of people like to use uh, user-based interfaces. So for that, we have um, the Kubernetes dashboard. If you're using Minikube, which is I'm using for this um, demonstration, you can do a Minikube dashboard command and it will start the Kubernetes dashboard. And as we can see that right now, all the pods are functioning properly. Uh, let's zoom in a bit so we can see a bit more names. So we see um, all the pods names and we can have a look at the, 
stateful sets as well, and the services. So everything we saw from the command and interface is also visible um, from Kubernetes itself. So the next thing we want to see is the Gigaspaces uh, management API. What we saw so far is the Kubernetes pods, but we didn't see any of the Gigaspace components running within those pods. So as you remember, we saw that service uh, 3D18H90 uh, is exposed. Let's use the same URL and open it in a different tab with that port. And what we see now is the Gigaspaces management API. And uh, this is generated by Swagger. Uh, which is a very popular tool for a RESTful API. And for example, we can have a look at the spaces, say get space, for example, and say um, list me all the spaces. We see that we have a space called demo, same as installation, and all of its instance IDs. And for example, we can do more advanced commands like list all the instances. Um, sorry, not this command, all the instances. And type the space name, for example, demo. And then we see that we have four instances, for example, demo 1.1, one, one, demo 1.2. One, this time we see also the, the space tool. So this one is the primary for partition one. This one is the backup for, for, uh, for partition one. It's 1.1 one, one and 1.2. One, and we can also see the, the host ID. So this one is running on a pod with that name, and this one is running on a pod with that name. So we have some more information and correlation of what's going on between the pods and uh, gigaspaces. So the next thing to do is to start working on that grid. So we can um, run a Spark job. Um, and the first Spark job we'll run is actually not related to instance specifically. It's more generic. It's a Spark example that calculates uh, the number of digits in pi after a certain digit. So what we'll do, we will run a command called instance submit. We'll specify that the Kubernetes master is um, this the IP port right here. That's the Minikube IP in our case. It's deployed mode cluster. That's the one that supports uh, Kubernetes. We specify the image name as the Gigaspaces Insert Edge with version 14. That's the official Gigaspaces Kubernetes image. And um, that's just, and it runs the Spark Pi as we explained. Let's take all of this and run it. So let's copy the command and go back to the command line. Notice this time we're running it from the, within the Insert Edge installation because we need the Insert Edge script. Let's paste it inside and uh, run the command. So now what's going to happen is that this is going to contact the Kubernetes cluster, find the Spark master, submit the job. It's going to create an, a driver pod. We can actually go to uh, the Kubernetes dashboard and see this. So if you look at the pods right now, we'll see that there's a Spark Pi um, driver um, pod being created. And this driver is running, executing the command. It's also creating um, additional pods called executor pods, which are executing the, the actual job. And eventually when it will finish, those executor pods are terminated and we're left with the results. Let's um, zoom um, in a bit. So we can see the name. So we can see we have the driver pod and the executor pods. And once the calculation will be done, then um, let's zoom back inside. We see that the driver pod is in state terminated completed, which means that uh, it's no longer consuming resources, but its logs are still available. We can go into that part in the logs and we can see that it's calculated pi and gave us these results and the additional logs are about execution. Um, but we want to do something more interesting, which is related to the data grid. So let's um, close this and go back to our documentation. And now we want to run an insert edge Spark job. In this case, it's going to generate some content, for example, 100,000 products. And it's going to um, do this uh, through a Spark and then save the results, save the RDD inside the data grid we just created, the de demo data grid. And then it means that it's available for um, additional um, computations or Spark transformations or um, um, somewhere else. Uh, so it's a very similar command. It's the insert edge command with, again, the same IP port. This time we're running an insert edge example called save RDD. It's the same Docker image and the different jar file. It's going to contact the space called the demo. Uh, let's copy the command and run it from the command line. 
So again, the process is uh, very uh, similar. It's going to um, contact the master, create a driver pod. That driver pod is going to create additional um, executor pods, etc., etc. So this time, the data is going to get generated, get stored into the space. Now we want to um, have a look inside the space and see what's what's going on there. We want to actually see the data. Uh, what we can do is, of course, we can use the space API to, to um, write an application that contacts the space, but we can also use Zeppelin. So um, as you saw before, um, through the uh, Minikube dashboard, um, let's run the command for the dashboard again. So it's the one with... Okay, uh, so we have a Zeppelin pod as well. And we saw that the Zeppelin pod is the same, but with an address of uh, 990. And we get the Zeppelin API. Uh, we want to create a new notebook, um, so we can type in our commands. And this notebook, uh, let's call it a demo. And we want to base it on an interpreter called Insight Edge JDBC. This interpreter is, is, as its name suggests, uses uh, JDBC to interact with Insight Edge. It's packaged within the Insight Edge Zeppelin um, platform with, with Zeppelin that comes with Insight Edge, either with Kubernetes or without Kubernetes. Let's get started. And let's type in our first command. For example, let's say you want to um, select um, all the products. And let's execute the command. So the first time that it's running, it's taking a bit longer because it needs to um, contact the space, and then the follow-up commands are uh, much uh, faster. And we see that we get a set of results. Uh, we can also run um, more sophisticated commands. For example, uh, give me just the idea and the quantity based on a filter. So we can simply create um, another node and run it. Okay, and then we get a smaller subset, and we can also use visualizations such as um, charts um, or pie graphs or many of the other tools that Zeppelin offers. And we see that it's very nice to interact with data this way. It is, can, it is useful either for uh, debugging or troubleshooting, and also it's very friendly for um, data scientists or uh, data engineers with which to um, interact with the space without writing code. So we saw a complete workflow of um, setting up a data grid and running a Spark job or an instead job and then visualizing the data. Um, what happens if there's a, a failure? So let's go to the um, back to Zeppelin. Sorry, to the Kubernetes dashboard. And let's try to kill some pods. For example, if you remember, we saw that uh, this pod is the backup and this pod is the primary. So if we kill this pod, what we expect to happen is that, first of all, because it got killed, uh, the backup should detect that the primary is dead using the manager, which uses the keeper under the hood. And then its mode should flip away from backup to primary. And also we expect that Kubernetes will detect that this pod is dead and spin up a new pod to replace its place. And it's going to come up as a backup in gigaspaces. So let's go to this pod. Uh, it was the first one. And kill it. Uh, let's simulate this using the uh, exit command. So we can actually go through the Kubernetes dashboard, go directly inside the pod, and run a command that does something. For example, we can say uh, that we want to kill with a, a sig terminate or sig kill signal um, everything that is Java related. We see that we got a connection closed because what happened here is that um, we closed the Java process, which was the main process of this pod. So Kubernetes decided that it's no longer um, running and it closed it. So we, our connection is terminated. If you go back here and run the command again, sorry. So this time we see that the first one is backup and the second one is primary, the switch places. And also if you go back to Kubernetes and look at the pods, we see that uh, this pod was restarted once. So um, it's much younger than the other one, and it just got restarted because we did.